Welcome to Whole Back Rack Podcast. My name is Jessica Hare. I operate Hare Hollow Farm and we breed boas, balls, and select colubrids. Hi, I'm Jenna King. I operate ASM Royal Tails and I breed high end ball pythons. We want to share our journey navigating herpetoculture and are dedicated to promoting biohazard safety for all species. And we would love you to answer the question what's in your whole back rack? We have an intro. I guess we could just start talking. But um, episode eight. Stars. Episode eight. We did it. We've made more than most people. Slow clap, ladies and gentlemen. We've achieved the new high score. Woohoo. Each we week we will achieve a new high next score. Leveled in our podcasting careers with our whole t- 10 people who are down. Oh, now. gosh. Yeah. So I, you heard. I guess some of it that I was on Corn Stars. Um, yeah, I'm about 45 minutes into it. I do plug this podcast and you and at the end. He's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, we're doing a podcast poorly and probably inappropriately, <laughs> but we are doing it. We are doing it. So, Episode eight. Welcome new people who might be a uh, whole back wreck curious. Trying to check it out. It's probably as inappropriate as you imagined it was based on some of the things I said in the Corn Stars podcast. I don't know if you've gotten to it yet. I, I call it a scaleless corn snake, a penis muppet, and it was fine that I said that. I'm about there. You just started talking about palmettos, and there was like a corn snake death, I, and that's when I was like trying to get ready. So right. It's I, fine. That's when I popped um, it. I was drinking a little bit. Not a lot. Oh. Not oh, sloppy. But I was oh, like, I need, I need to get a little loose, maybe a little too loose. <laughs> it was really fun to hear you interact with intellectual peers with the, the education level and foundation as you in the reptile hobby. Because I feel like sometimes you talk to me and you probably feel like you're talking to a wall and I just gloss over and they seemed to keep up with you and all the words you were throwing out there. So that was pretty fun for me to listen to. Okay, you're my intellectual peer. You're just not as That's not storied what I meant. Yeah. in the uh, dumb stuff on the internet about snakes, which is, frankly... I, I, I am here, but I am also a student of learning and have not advanced that far because you guys were talking and I understood about half of the words you were using. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I can own that. Like, I'm not putting myself down. I'm just saying, like, it was really cool to hear people firing back and forth really quickly what you were saying. I would like to get to that point. It's coming. Some, someday soon. All right, you're doing great. It was, it was really fun. It was fun to listen yeah. to, is what I was trying to say. I, I, my advice is still to, like, go back in time. Old NPR. Old from the ground up. Old Herpet Culture Network podcast. Old... The stuff that's been canceled, like ball shit and old Snake and the Fat Man. Because there's a lot of context to, like, you know, there's 20 years of context that you didn't didn't get yet. And a lot of that's in there. So, like, that might, just when you're touching somebody's poop, you're just like, oh, I'll just double check a little bit of something. There's so much content now, like, it's hard to go back. I can see how. Right. Yeah. For sure. When you try to keep up with the current content hitting the old content it's yeah. on my to-do list you need like a crazy road trip or something go drive to yellowstone and uh tell your husband he has to suffer and you're gonna mainline 20 years of herpetoculture <laughs> podcasts of different <laughs> kinds <laughs> oh he hates podcasts i got he? it out of him he is not a social creature he's very much a introvert uh, he was just acting so weird about the podcast that I finally dug into him and was like, what the deal? Do you not want me to talk about you? Do you like what? Do you not want me to do it? Do you not? Are we triggering him, him right you, now by talking are about we him? triggering him? Yeah, like he refuses to listen to it. And so unless I like listen to it after the kids go to sleep and have not have headphones in. That's the only way that this person is going to listen to my podcast. And he's normally super supportive and he's normally like, yay, you're awesome. And so 
been really frustrating to me because I'm really, really proud of our podcast and I'm really glad we're doing it. And it's like, I don't know, I'm like really gung ho and proud of it as like an adult thing I did irrespective of my children or my family or it's like the thing I did, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I would like my spouse to be proud of the thing I did. And he's just like, eh. And so he's proud. He just doesn't want to listen. Probably. He doesn't want to listen to it at all. It makes him uncomfortable to listen to two people talking because he doesn't want to listen to people talking because he's antisocial. So for him, it feels like he's, being tortured at a family event being forced to listen to people talk to him (laughs) and that's not his jam so i get it i understand as long as he's not like jealous or hates what i'm doing like the content like as long as it's not those things cool it makes you uncomfortable that people are trying to talk at you i get that that's that's a fundamental theme (laughs) do you think if the topic was something he was more interested in he would be more interested in two people talking that concept or no no he has never listened to a podcast ever in his life and never plans okay yeah well then he's good we know he's fine yeah no no he's not like excluding my podcast while he listens to like gamer podcasts yeah it's no chris is like a pathological listener like twitch is on all the time all the time audiobooks whatever like even when he's sleeping i'm like stop you can't you're not you're not understanding right now what you're you're asleep yeah so uh uh, i'm not sure what you're doing so he's that's why he's been listening i don't think he really cares about uh corn snakes looking like whatever speckles you know he doesn't care about that part but i think just like people talking he enjoys the sort of ambiance i don't know people are weird and and monkeys are weird yeah, so he's the exact opposite. It does not give him warm fuzzies to listen to his wife be amazing. It just makes him uncomfortable. Well, you are amazing, so he's missing out. The Snakes and the Fat Man 15 Minutes of Lame contest was decided, the voting, and Antoine Hood won. Congratulations, Antoine. Yay. 15 Minutes of Lame. He was always like a favorite. I did vote for uh, Full Throttle, Alyssa Leonard, though. I don't know. She's, like, so fun and bubbly. That was who I voted for. I don't know who you, you were rooting for. Did you vote for anybody? I was not following the contest. was not involved. Crazy non-sleeper child. Okay. That's okay. Lost the touch with reality. Tough cool. week. There was a, another contender early on for the prize. And I won't say who they were, but they actually... It rhymes with? <laughs> I don't even know. I don't know. They... You can tell if you go look at like old promotional pictures and new promotional pictures because their face is missing because they were eliminated from the contest because someone from their Discord sort of ran a bot to cheat the the vote. Eater, cheater, pumpkin eater. I know. And supposedly the person, they didn't start it, but they didn't also stop it from happening and they were sort of aware of it. This is from Snakes and the Fat Man himself. Yeah, so yep. that's not, I don't know if it's like he's a terrible person, but Discord is private, but it's not super private, so. Remember, if it's in black and white, right. people can screenshot it and share it with others. Just yeah. a little tip there for you, hot take. <laughs> and I'm in this person's Discord, but I never even, I didn't even notice that happening when it was happening, and I only knew about it. During the podcast. So that was the Snakes and the Fat Man contest. So Antoine Hood gets his full episode. And uh, the cheater was kicked out. So we'll see how that works out for his sort of career moving forward. I don't know. I don't think it's going to affect his like ball python like breeding business. But I think it... You know, if you're not on Snakes and the Fat Man anymore because he's mad at you. He's like, you know, friends with a lot of people. So I don't know what that means. I don't know. I think the reptile community as a whole can be pretty brutal with their like lynch mob and F you and uh, sort of, but then they have like the memory of a goldfish and they forget On to the next, like some okay. of the people that they've like destroyed. There's too many like dumb new people coming in and I won't say a person's name, but lost so many Instagram followers, blah, blah, blah. 
People are like, I'll never buy from you. His stuff still sells on Morph Market today. It is substantially cheaper than like medium price for that Morph, but he's not out of business. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So Good to know because I have this fear. One misstep and you're... No, there's still people who are like convicted felon animal abuse people still selling snakes somehow. So, I mean, that's not any of the previous people we've spoken about, but other people, you know, they've, they're a felon for animal abuse, somehow can find a state where they can still keep animals and keep doing whatever torture things they're doing. And people, he find people to sell to. So, yes, us putting our foot in the mouth three to five times an episode is fine compared to that, in my opinion. Yes. And I guarantee, though, I will put my foot in my mouth. I'm working on it right now. It's kind of hard. I'm not stretchy enough like I used to be. But <laughs> JKR hit the Xanthic DG Clown. It was very nice. Good job. It was. I mean, that's an understatement. It's very nice. It was nice. I wonder how <sighs> yellow it'll be at the end, but we'll see. He didn't announce the Xanthic strain. Is it his? Like, I don't inside know. one? A super secret, we don't know what it is. No, that just came out of Pied. I think th- they don't know which one that one is, but they think it's TSK. It was phenomenal. I think that it looks way better than the DG clown, which I kind of don't love. So I'm glad it looks so nice. I think it does look incredible as a baby. I think everyone should be ready that it's going to be a yellow and black snake as an adult. It's not going to be white and black as an adult. And no amount of, like, squinting at it will make it not yellow and black as an adult. Is his EG line, isn't his more, like, cool tones? As opposed to, like, my enhancer, which is warm tones? Isn't Because there's Sometimes. a very wide range. There's so a range a cool within, tone, within DGs. So it almost correct. would make a more exanthic animal to get a Mojave DG clown than put exanthic in it. Okay. In my opinion, the I'd like to see that a Desert you know, Ghost GHI Mojave is far yellower than a GHI Mojave. The yellow is amped up in a DG. Okay. The um, DGs I, that turn yellow, the ones that is it, lose all their color magically, uh, are different. Obviously, we'll see what happens. I, I would like to uh, state a correction. Um, I don't know. I think two episodes ago, that I when I was looking for a G stripe clown and I had messaged Justin and I said he didn't message me back. That's not correct. My junk box just ate it. <laughs> so Summer did email me back actually the next day after I had messaged her. It had been a whole week by the time we recorded our thing and I was like, yeah, they haven't messaged me back. Uh, my junk box ate it. So my bad. You have to flag Justin as like a favorite. So it'll give a little star, and it won't. It go did your play junk a star. Yeah. yeah, it's a star now. Good job. But Justin. anyway, yep, they they do answer their emails. I just, uh, um, yeah. Didn't so that happened. Junk. Yeah, uh, that's okay. Thanks, Justin. He also hit no surprise here. If you put multiple dark genes in a clown and nothing that super conflicts them, they make an amazing snake. A GHI confusion black pastel posse yellow belly. So. To me, they were phenomenal, but it's, like, not surprising anymore. Like, the best clown combos are the busiest and the darkest. Uh, the end. Do you think it had yellow belly? No, but I don't. But what do I know? I don't know. Confusion hides yellow belly in, in clown. I don't know if you noticed that. The flames it did have were not colored at all. They were quite white. So that would be what you would expect from a black pastel flame. Okay. To me. They were phenomenal yeah phenomenal animals holy crap but everything he posts and then (laughs) elijah snyder a friend of the podcast posted a to me funny video of him reviewing a sales platform that is trying to compete with morph market on the grounds that all of the animals on the platform have been vetted as ethically raised but the definition of ethical isn't on the website per animal. It's just sort of like a a buzzword. And he put a video out 
And some people thought it was funny and some people did not think it was funny. But the post on World of Ball, Ball Pythons was so sort of like... The Facebook group. Yeah, World of Ball Pythons the Facebook group. Toxic isn't the right word. But there was a lot of people who were like, this sucks, this sucks. But then like a lot of people went and saw it because they're like, it sucks. To me, like not enough people watched enough of it to get his point because the beginning was sort of long. I literally fell asleep. Sorry, Elijah. Um, also, my child has been giving me like one hour of sleep a night. So <laughs> that may have contributed to it. Yeah. I was one of those people that did not get to finish it. Yeah, if he but did the I, whole I, video maybe in a 15-minute block instead, and so, like, you got to, like, the the point of claiming being ethical is hard, so you need to back it up with how you believe you're claiming that. And then you're fighting the morph with. market, which is an industry leader for a reason, so you need to bring your A-game and... An industry giant, like, yeah. you're you're not going to be able to compete with that. Right. I mean, if you want to, join that's it. Fine. Don't compete with it. <laughs> I I don't know. I with like the the premise that like they're going to win because they're ethical is fraught to begin with, and that is correct. Uh, on Elijah's point. So if anybody wants to go watch it, I'll put a link in the uh, show notes. Just uh, give it time. Skip forward a little bit if you oh. want. He goes through everyone's uh, ads and talks about. Whether or not it's ethical, really. Why did it get taken down? Because it got heated in the comments? Yeah, a lot of people were just like, ad hominem attacks to Elijah, like he was dumb or whatever. And he was just sort of being pithy in the comments back because he's a, I don't know, ballsy. You know, he doesn't care. He's He'll be pithy back. He, he is who he is. And yeah. the people's rude comments aren't going to deter him. Yeah, and so people would be like, it, like maybe a real criticism comment would be like, you you lift up morph market if you prefer it. You don't be negative about something you don't prefer. Oh, okay. like kind of, kind of. I don't know. Like to me, I'm pretty negative on people who ghost me when they I want to test, which we're gonna get into that in like ten seconds. So like mm -hmm. I'm publicly negative about that, but I'm publicly singing the praises of people who test. But people should be embarrassed when they send. Disease snakes people won't refund, shouldn't they? Shouldn't we call them out? So is I don't know. I don't know how positive or negative you should be to try to make a change. But obviously, catch more flies with honey. So here we are. That's why we bring Jana on. <laughs> that can roll us right into the update of the year, actually. It's crazy. It, whoa. Describe it. It blew my mind when I read it. But for some reason, most mind. people have not read it even still, but you describe it. I have it pulled up if you want me to verbatim read it, but I can just describe it if you want to. Yeah, I don't think we need to read it verbatim. Just So what we're talking about is Morph Market has issued a default policy update for virus testing. It is monumental for the entire industry monumental to have morph market backing up testing i just can't even how brave and ballsy and encouraging that is all right describe what it is though okay so they basically are stating that if you buy an animal off morph market and it tests positive the morph market policy is that the seller owes you a refund. And they state very specific timelines and criteria with which you need to follow in order for this policy to work out in your favor. But it's basically an accountability policy if you're selling, say, animals, which in the past, in the before, because <laughs> we are now in the after... I couldn't tell you how many times you have been ghosted. I've been ghosted because we were trying to be upfront. If you're buying an expense, any, I mean, even if it's only a few hundred dollars, if the person isn't willing to back that with a disease free guarantee, you're basically rolling dice and gambling with your money. And when you start getting into the higher end projects, you know, when that's three to $5,000, 
you can't gamble with three. Well, I don't gamble with three to five thousand dollars. You can do whatever you want, but it is a now a standardized policy that if you sell someone and they are choosing to test, you are liable for that, and you don't get to be like, well, uh. And if you don't want to do that, you can opt out, but you have to specifically state it in your policy terms and make yourself look like a D bag that I don't want to buy from anyway. Right. That's the biggest, quiet. the biggest blessing right there is you don't have to come to somebody on bended knee with like a groveling, nice email. Everybody's on the same page unless they've signaled that they're not. Thank God. But do we, do we even have to ask anymore? No, you have to double check with their terms of service that they haven't chosen to opt out, but everyone should be on the same page. The thing that's like giving me really intense, weird feelings is the lack of response from big dogs of any kind. Big dog bull python breeders, big dog boa breeders, big dog corn breeders, big dog any breeders. Crickets, nothing. They don't say yay or nay. They're obviously mad about it, is my opinion. They don't want to be held accountable. They don't want people trying to hold them accountable. I have no idea why there's no response. Can you think of a I... reason? Even from people who condone testing, there's still no response. Like, no, like... So do they the want people to not know that they can test so that they'll pass through their two-day window and then everything will continue as normal? That is my instincts. If you read the policy... Basically, it only applies to those of us who are testing on intake. It's not t telling the sellers that they have to test, and it's not telling buyers that they have to test. It's saying those of you who do test, the sellers are liable and do have to refund you because they, that is considered selling an unhealthy animal, which is a monumental first step. I'm not trying to... No, to yeah. No, more market that is doing correct. I just don't understand why the rest of the hobby but, hasn't... So the rest of the hobby... I think will continue to remain silent on it because the less publicity it gets, the less people are going to be asking the question of if Morph Market, who is the industry giant, the selling place for multiple reptiles, all the reptiles, is stating that this is their new policy, if no one notices and no one questions it and no one is asking questions then everything is going to continue status quo. And so we know from emailing that Justin will let you test. And if you get a positive, that he will refund you. I don't have it in black and white from Billy, but he knows that I'm testing and he asked for the results when I got the results. So I should point blank ask him what his policy is. If they're already allowing those who do, which I don't, feel like it's that many so for them it's the same amount of people testing as before if that makes sense so it's not going to affect them as long as they don't look at it too closely if that makes I know. sense i'm just saying if an industry leader wanted to be a leader they could be like oh great news i already do this anyway but so for any of you that are curious this was basically the policy anyway but None of them have to have done it. And I've gone across the board, corn snakes, bearded dragons. I've looked for people who are not just normal laymen or, or sort of intense hobbyists that are excited about this. It's almost no one. All of the little Discord buddies all went off and speared it off and put, you know, the link in all the Discords were all in everywhere. I put them in BOA Facebook groups and I put it in World of Ball Python Facebook group. There's lots of likes, but they're mostly just people. No, no, yeah. big, no big dog is like, okay, cool. That's what I do anyway. It has become where's, very clear. Where's snake clear discovery me? at? You know, they're like the most public, most ethical people around. Let's hear how you're excited about it. Uh, snake discovery. Yeah, I, I don't think, I don't think that the good old boys club, NARBC club, yeah, obviously them, but, but, don't but what about... I think we're going to hear from them. What about literally everyone else? Everyone else. Everyone you know, else. YouTubers, is... pet tubers that don't even ha breed. They just love pets. This is I don't know. that transformative. 
crickets. So weird. Crickets. Yeah, the, the hard part to me about it right now is crypto takes a poo sample, technically. So you can't get a poo out of a snake in two days. So my policy, store policy, is still more generous. It's seven-ish days. But if somebody came to me and was like, I need to get poos out of these, but I don't want to feed them for seven days. Can I have two weeks to get a poo? And I'm like, okay, sure. For sure. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So uh, hopefully people... We could be more generous, but it's monumental to have something. Yes. To have some sort. I mean, like, so what it looks like to me is that the sellers and the industry giants aren't going to get behind this and they aren't going to push this and they aren't going to use their influence on this subject. But we've already seen that. I mean, they could have been doing it for years now that we've had the technology to do so and they choose not to. So I think that it coming out of left field from Morph Market, who everyone loves and uses and needs and appreciates and all of the amazing up- upgrades that they're working on and, and have per- uh, recently put into use, that they need our support. They are the ones that are going to push this cha- this change uphill. <laughs> and I think that that's what it's going to come down to is that the, yeah, it's, it's backwards. It shouldn't be th- the platform that you sell through that's having to police this but the fact that they are we've got to just take that and run and hope that one day somebody jumps in and and starts pushing it as well but i think for now he's standing alone (laughs) yeah i i'm also concerned that people might be messaging him behind the scenes and be like uh I'm a oh, I'm, level I tier would. 45, you know, supreme whatever advertiser. This wasn't what I've signed up for. I don't know. I, I heard... would love to be a bug in his email. <laughs> because <laughs> I, know. I am sure that he does not have crickets. I am sure that he... No, I know. Isn't that has crazy? Not, he has probably had so much blowback. Um, but I think that he came from a a really strong position and the policy is so light. (laughs) Yeah. You can opt out technically if you want, you can opt out and it's only for people who are testing. You don't have to test your own things and you don't, it's completely reasonable that no matter how angry people are or no matter how upset people are to see this, it's, it was the right amount of step forward of ease forward (laughs) like i don't i don't it's being done so well and i i'm ecstatic for the community and for the testing community and for that little push forward feels like huge 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 progress uh what does this mean to normal people to normal people it means if you haven't tested yet and you're interested maybe you should because more people may be testing on intake because they sort of are aware that it exists as a choice now so you could if you wanted to but you could still just allow them to test your stuff but you need to at minimum have a place in your home that you can have returned snakes unless you want to ask every one of your buyers to euthanize for you which is its own problem collections can't be like one way they have to have a return portion because that's how we're moving forward you should probably double check their results use your la- your vet, whatever. You shouldn't assume... I don't think people are going to be testing... I don't think people ever test to, like, defame your name, by the way, everybody. Never. Never. never we bought the snake because we want it. Because we wanted it. Because we wanted to add it to the project. <laughs> I have been accused of that. I and know. It's so it's crazy. maddening. And it's like, no, you don't understand. I just lost an important piece to my project. And I bought this animal. I'm not having buyer's remorse. I am pissed, but I am being courteous and calm because I'm a professional and that is what you do. But that does not mean that I am using this to return an animal that's fine. Like, I wanted this animal. That's why I bought this animal. And Right. I, it's, it's very twisted logic where they're like, of course you're out to get me. Uh... Because I'm famous or something? I don't know. It's nonsense. Yeah, absolute Um, garbage. But 
now you can't be accused of that because it's in the terms of service. So we're we're doing so good. Thank you, John. Uh, I will uh, uh, send you flowers or something. I don't know where you live, but I'll find out because that's <laughs> what we need to do. Or like a meat basket. Yeah, that seems fun. Like charcuterie and cheeses. Uh, yeah, it's the holidays. <laughs> wow, that sounds fancy. Oh my God, I love charcuterie. Okay. Never experienced that. Hadn't even heard that word until about what salami three, and s- summer sausage three months ago. Oh, what? I have a random question, and this was important to me. So here we go. Do you think a banana combo should be sold after the first shed, but before the second shed? And I bring this up because somebody, Brian Carter, BC Balls, posted pictures, and he's like, "Whoops, I guess they change a lot." I need to quickly do update pictures for Morph Market because they're completely different now. And I was like... I think that some lines of banana do that thing that you taught me about where they like wash out and then they shed again and they're fine. So absolutely... I don't think it's even lines. I think it's combos. Like the whole... The oh. entire combo will do oh, that. Well, that's, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. maybe true. I, my experience... I haven't seen it in every combo, but mine did that and it caused like a huge drama between me and the seller because I was like, you photoshopped it. This is not the right snake. And I like freaked out and I was like, that is not. No, I don't know what that trash is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Luckily, I think people really awesome. in general people should maybe wait, wait till the second shed to sell a banana combo because they seem to be a little more stable. I know it's another four or five weeks. I mean, if you're selling a banana, a regular banana, go for it. They don't change that much. But like a banana pie, a banana high-end combo, they look incredibly different between those two sheds. Or we just need to have a better understanding as a community that that's happening. Like, I had no awareness until that happened to a snake I had spent quite a lot of money on. And i asked around because i was freaking out that i was getting like scammed or whatever and all the people were like he's not a scammer he's a really great guy we've all bought from him and nobody's had any problems and i'm like okay so he's not a scammer then why would he photoshop his photos so crazy and it took me quite a while i talked to you about it and i had asked around in different groups it took me quite a while before you had given me that answer, and so then I was able to like ask other people if they had experienced that with banana combos, and that's when I finally. It wasn't something I could Google or something that I could like deep dive in forums or Facebook groups. It was something I had to like specifically ask and to get well, specific answers. We're on the record now. A banana, no. most banana combos, banana pies, and banana multi gene combos change color from the first shed to the second shed. And before the first shed. So, like, they'll be super saturated, then they'll desaturate almost all the way, then they will gain the color back. Yes. It's crazy. I don't know why nobody talks about it, but I think if you're going to sell it before, then you should put a a note in the ad. A disclaimer in the ad. Post first shed banana, and maybe even wait till the second shed, frankly. Because they do look, to me, they look better after the second shed. They do. It's cool. It's a cool look when they're all washed out, but it's not the look you're going for with a banana. <laughs> so that like white and purple is not really what you're going for. And it's not going to stay like that. And so, yeah, I, I now I know when I see because I've had that experience. But you're, but I don't think the everyday person and even the newer breeders know that at on any level. You heard it here first. So you heard it here first. Hot take. Banana between first and second shed can look white and purple instead of orange and purple. (laughs) It's crazy that it can do that. Now, collection updates. Do you have any collection updates? My Butter Hypo DG female, proven female that I got on crazy deal on Facebook um, was Boyd negative. That's exciting. You know what? I I still think it's Boyd. But who am I? Boed? I thought it was a Boyd panel. You know what? Uh, all the ball python people call them Boyds because of Ozzy Boyds. But it's like saying Boed. zoology. You know, there's two vowels there. So you pronounce each of them separately. Okay. Uh, um, I, uh, um, call in. Uh, phone lines are open. Operators are standing by. We want to know if the proper pronunciation for B-O-I-D is Boyd or Boed. Um, Boed. 
panel. Um, we could ask Chad. So that was really exciting because she was really, really crazy cheap. So I was concerned and she was housed with like Amazon tree boa. Is that what she was selling with it? I don't know. There was a bunch of other species and stuff and that's always scary. So she's in a tub all by herself in a way other room and I was completely expecting her to be positive for everything. So the fact that she's negative is huge. She has plenty of time for quarantine because she laid in like the first week of October. So all good things. Your turn. Oh yeah, you have a ton of time. You're, you're ton good, of time. Good. Yeah, I'm really excited. All of my stuff came back in and I guess this is I haven't taken a picture of them yet, but my like animal reveal is I got a banana calico yellow belly clown from Character Meyer, Royal Constrictor Designs, and I got a female clown finally. A calico clown. He's very attractive looking. He's got a cute little like paradox ringer butt, which is pretty cool cute. I don't know. I'm still like concerned. My reservation was always the banana. I don't mind him making hets, because then the male hets are have the banana because he's a male maker. So those which could be sell the shows. Yeah, that'd yeah. be fine. That part's great. It's just like if you're breeding him back to a whatever to hit a male combo whatever. G H I yellow belly calico whatever I'm into. Forever. They're yeah. forever also going to have banana. Yeah. So but I'm you know how like sometimes you'll you'll miss banana because you have a recombination event on the gametes. And so sometimes mm-hmm. females will be banana, it sometimes happens. males will be not banana. I'm just like hoping that happens like ten times. So yeah, my experience with banana <laughs> that actually produced any males because my banana pie produces no males ever is that all of my bananas have been males but then it's still 50 50 for the other offspring that's not so gender wise really no so like half of the offspring will be girls and half the offspring will be boys but they're not banana boys that's not but all of my it's supposed to be five to ten percent for both ways that hasn't been my experience, and the other people that I've talked to that have bananas have had similar ratios to me. It just might have been just dumb luck. So, if people don't know, banana and ball pythons is sex linked. So, it can either be on the Y chromosome or the X chromosome. A lot of the original bananas that came in were female. So, they were just making female bananas for a long time. Um, and male bananas in small amounts because they're just. Because it was on the X chromosome. So the mom would give an X to a son or a daughter, but she might give the non-banana X. What you needed is a recombination event where a male banana moves the banana gene over to his Y chromosome. And so he gives a banana gene to his sons. Uh, And then you have like a recipe for a price drop worthy of of a novel. Because now you have an attractive incomplete dominant gene on a male ball python and you can run him to 10 snakes and drive the price right into the ground. And it only makes more males, which drives it even further into the ground. Yeah. (laughs) If you have a male maker, you need him to cross it over when he's making gametes to his X chromosome to give it to daughters or take it away from his Y and give a regular Y to make a normal son. So the rate is supposed to be five to 10%. It just depends on, uh, dumb luck. If you got a lot of normal males, you are just incredibly lucky. Congratulations. <laughs> Instead of bananas. Like, you hit the one in hundred three times. Interesting. Yeah, because he throws a lot of non-bananas. My GHI G-stripe banana monstrosity. He throws a lot of not banana males. It's just dumb luck. Like, I made... What I'm trying to say is reassure you that that could be your dumb luck and that it could be fine. Yes. Yeah. It's not or like it your animal is broken. Your your males. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I'm just we'll h- hoping for that five to ten percent to hit on enough key males that I can make calico yellow okay. belly not banana males of different combos. Um, and he'll be ready next year. Yeah. He's a 2021. He's a little chicken nugget. He needs a lot of going but i have a whole but you have a whole year you have a whole year well, nine to, months yeah or whatever have a long time yeah, yeah he's, he'll be he, fine he he passed the full panel with sunshine yay yeah and garrett that's, that's awesome was 
very protesting. Uh, no, what? He was pro you testing. Oh yeah, protesting. He wasn't protesting. I was like, uh, sorry. <laughs> I was confused. He was. Yeah, he was very gracious even before the morph market uh, policy change. So. Um, right. He was can, amazing. You so can do business with Garrick and feel confident in what's happening. Yay. And this is my, f- finally I've found a female clown. Holy mackerel. This is the, probably the, did she come from Garrick as well? Yeah. I just like throw it in there. Obviously she's not gonna be ready for a long time, but now you have one in your rack. I so have a I, I mean, clown, not about a clown. That. Yeah. I'm not sure what the plans are and we'll go through like a whole episode of like future plans but in general i want to start getting mails that are for next year as soon as you can in the previous year budget notwithstanding so this is just part of that process i've this, he's become my like big mail for next year and then maybe after christmas we'll get the new desert ghost mail and then the new pie mail you only need to sell four to ten kidneys to <laughs> get there uh, man. what what pied mail are you trying to get i don't care i would prefer a pied het desert ghost with the incomplete diamond that doesn't make me want to puke in my mouth and then i want a <laughs> desert ghost male visual it doesn't have to be het for anything else but he, so he could be like just to replace the inchy dg that's not that exciting anymore and i have lots of inchy het dg daughters now so like I need to run like a new mail over those things. So I wouldn't, I would love to buy like a DG Krypton um, as like the replacement DG. Cause it's, you know, another recessive that's probably floating on half the DG stuff anyway, but it's a clown replacement. I could put him to all those, the het clown girls that are, have something stupid in them like pastel. And that'd be like a more, it'd be a better pairing than just a straight DG plus incomplete dominant. But if a blackhead DG just, <sighs> fell out of the sky i wouldn't be that mad about that either even with no additional recessive so do you think this new morph market policy will change the way you buy (sighs) or open up more avenues for you to buy yeah i feel like maybe i'll have more confidence to buy the one i actually want instead of buying stuff from people i know won't treat me like shit like you could try more people out like look right Maybe go more expensive. I've been like given clear orders to not buy cheap things, buy as expensive as possible to keep things instead of going horizontal, go vertical in price. Right. And that's correct. It's just it's difficult when when it's a gamble. When yeah, when it's a gamble and it's like fifty, seventy percent of the time you either get no response or bad responses and then you get demoralized and you go buy more corn snakes. So like uh <laughs> repeat 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 yeah that's happened multiple <laughs> times now where i'm like okay i guess i'm leaving uh the ball python hobby for three months i'll be back when you guys have improved substantially that's pretty much my collection update everybody came back negative i tested the russian rathnakes for crypto tested the the lavender arctic hoggy boy for crypto is negative they're all going to go down now so we'll have them come back up in two months do their thing it'll be delicious to look at he's very sassy and but like bold about it my female is like very she doesn't want to talk to you but she and so she'll get mad at you if you're in there but he'll come out just to sass at you he's like actively pursuing you i guess he wants to be fed or something i'm trying to like because i'm i'm emptying him out to go down but so he'll come out to like you know, see what you're doing but then he's like oh i don't think so and he'll like uh give you a little old uh talking down um but he's you know i actually love it when snakes are like that like 50 gram uh nothing little yeah. uh, unicorn fart of a snake how do they go down at that size they don't even get that big in the end anyway um oh okay like a male hog nose is a third or quarter the size of an adult female hog nose wait so do they go down together they'll go down at the same time so they come up together but i don't have to house them together is that what you mean yeah, because you put your japs together. Yeah, always that's... Together. Never mind, just, they're yeah, always together. That's just because okay. um, I don't want multiple bins. They don't have to be. They obviously don't hurt each other because they're cold and bored anyway. Right. But I could like put them together. It's fine. could not be put together. <laughs> There's some I mean, snakes where maybe... One snake. Yeah, we're, we're like being together might remind them that they were buddies or... Buddies is the wrong word, but like a compatible pair. 
So like when snakes are in the wild, they will brumate, usually not on purpose, but multiple animals will congregate the same hibernaculum. So you'll come April, you'll like flip 10 near a hibernaculum and it'll be like four black rat snakes, a couple of milk snakes, some garters, and you know, a decays or something. So those black rats that are coming out together, it's not quite as the same as those like group, you know, garter snake explosions that happen in Minnesota. It's not quite like that, but it, but those two black rats might, that might be the time they're like, I guess I'll store sperm from a little quickie before we disperse from the hibernaculum. They might not even, the, the pairings that happen later in the year might just complement the pairings that happen Already very early. Yeah, so. Hey, you're here, so I guess you're good. <laughs> and they do ovulate much later. Like a black rat ovulates in like May in even early June where I'm from. So like it would definitely be stored sperm. She's not ovulating. She's not worried about that yet. But it's quite possible there's some sperm storing or even like from the season before. Sometimes garter snakes will store but from before. So you should, if you're going to co-house them, they should be housed with the animals that you want them to breed with eventually. So I did, right. I did put all the corn together, but it was only the females. Because I wasn't sure which male was in charge of that. And also, they don't eat each other. Your mileage may vary with. So tips and tricks for both buying and vending at a reptile show. We're just going to go back and forth of things that we think of off the top of our head and riff a little bit. And then we'll talk about vending later. This is for buyers. What's your first tip for a buyer at a reptile show, Jana? When I'm buying, I like to go with like what I want in my mind. So if you just go and you're like, I want to buy something today, A, you're not prepared, and B, it can be very overwhelming. The Puyallup one, I feel like it's a little bigger than the Portland one, but it's a very large space and there are lots of vendors and have a list and know what you're getting. I mean, it could be like, I want to buy a ball python. It doesn't need to be like, I'm getting this exact morph, but go in with the idea of what you want or what supplies you're looking for because it's really easy to go in and get distracted by all all the beautiful things and all the extras that are everywhere. Right. So that's good. That'll maybe make you have the enclosure ready to go if you know approximately what you could be buying. Or at least you're like quarantine bin and if you're buying your enclosure at the reptile show to support local, then that's cool, but you should have a quarantine type um, Sterilite or whatever brand you want. Right. I mean, if you if home. you like really want to put it in the exoterra, just don't put in the bioactive part immediately. And you have no other snakes. You're just, they're going to have to tear it down if something bad happens, which happens all the time. Don't buy from tables that seem really uh, diverse, like weirdly diverse. And by that, I mean people have been like, extolling the benefits of a particular vendor on the local Facebook group. So like, wow, that's the only one that had anything cool. We'll Google that name real quick. Usually that's a flipper or a wholesaler. Yes, not every mom and pop shop has all the variety you want every time. But the quality that comes off of that table is different than the quality that comes off of the flipper table for lots of reasons besides just disease and mites reasons like the quality off of the the table that seems a little homogenous to you only has three species or two whatever the person knows all those animals intimately because they produce them they have care information they can tell you who's eating frozen thaw and they probably will give you a disease guarantee the flipper table can't do that so don't confuse like variety with quality um and if you're Confused as to how to spot a flipper or if someone is. Um, some tables do have multiple species, but like she said, they can give you information about those snakes, their date of birth, what they're eating. Um, and so you can just ask a few basic questions to understand if the person is producing these animals or if they purchase them to sell at the show. Mm-hmm. In general, most shows request that you do not bring your personal pets with you to the show for d- disease prevention and safety reasons and i think people need to hear that like three more times because i don't know how don't many shows bring I've, I've been... your pet to the show i think that 
they do a really good job unless you're a vendor of not allowing you through the doors with your pet. Good. But like I've been to shows where they don't do that. They don't seem to care. And so you'll have somebody with their retic like on their shoulders strolling around through oh, the cool. the like There was a guy like that. He wasn't associated with any of the vendors. I don't I don't know about Pac Mars. I just saying like I've seen it at other shows in other states. Okay. And I'm just like A gross. You're bringing your snake into all kinds of whatever on just people's clothes walking by. B, that's a safety risk because the snake is scared potentially. Maybe not. I don't know. Some dumb kid could reach up at any time and just like pull hard on that snake just because it's fun. And they're kids. They don't know any better. And then you have like a bite risk. Keep them at home. I'm, I'm so tired of people treating their snakes like dogs. It's been going on for 30 years, and I've seen a lot of it. They're not dogs. They don't really like stuff. They do like to maybe, like, cruise outside, but that's sort of, like, a stress event. And it's, like, maybe hormetic, but it's still stressful. So don't bring them to shows. Don't bring them. So assume that there is going to be a vendor at the show that is going to have mites. Depending on what reptile you are choosing on, purchasing, use your best judgment, and always quarantine your animal if you're bringing home like a ball python you can definitely pre-actively before you see mites treat for mites but there is definitely going to be somebody at the show that brings mites it happens every year and then all the facebook groups go crazy afterwards because they're all mad but just know that if you're bringing home an animal it should be quarantined properly and if it is called for or the type of thing that could handle it you can treat for mites and not infect your whole collection or your other species of reptiles. But quarantine, quarantine, quarantine. Yeah. That also is a, a, leads into another tip, which is when you're browsing, do not browse by touching. Like, go from one table to the next table to the next table. Because even if you think you're using enough hand sanitizer between tables or whatever, you're loading up yourself with potential risk to give the final animal you purchase whatever you touched on the last five to ten tables. You know what I mean? So, like, browse with your eyes first. Browse with your talking skills. Commit to an animal and then be like, okay, I'm 99% sure this is the one I want. This vendor allows touching of animals. I'd like to visually inspect it and hold it. That's when you commit. A lot of people treat the reptile show as a petting zoo, and some vendors like that. Some of them don't. If you're serious about reptiles, you don't need a petting zoo. You have one at home already. I tried to, like, coherently bring this up on the uh, Corn Stars episode. I'm not touching Pooja Sound Pythons, Bolin's Python, ever at a show. I am not going to be the one that gives it mites. doesn't matter how beautiful and rare it is. I can look at it and enjoy it. I want to touch it bad, but I'm not going to because I respect it too much. Uh, if she wants to touch it. I respect its bodily autonomy and it's it's his body, his choice. And so I'm not going to give it my <laughs> That's how I feel about it. Oh, Lord. So it's, it's going to be really fun vending next to you. Holy mackerel. I, I might give you a stroke. Because <laughs> you like <laughs> throw your snake out in people's arms. Uh-huh. All yeah. day long. All day long over and over again, you are going to have a hernia, and then you're going to be like, vendor people, I would like to move tables because there's too many germs next to me. Ew, yucky. <laughs> big, big cooties, Jana. That's what we're going to rename Jana. Big cooties. Like, oh, I, oh, I, I, uh, I get it, sort of, but uh, like, crypto doesn't care what you think, okay? I know. It, it, does it, crypto doesn't care that you're friendly and that you want all the kids to touch every snake. And crypto yeah, isn't I, defeated by hand sanitizer. So, like... I hear I, you. I get heebie-jeebies. I'm feeling it in my heart right here. Okay. It's okay. I mean, you should just lure them in and then I'll sell them stuff. So, thank you. I'm thinking, like, you should have animals that are dedicated to being touching animals. And those animals live in a touching animal quarantine space in your house. Like a like a an adult representative that's not a breeder that's just really tame and cool of yes, every kind. I will always have one, and they're going to get their own actually like Viv, 
there will be a designated snake and they are the snake that most people touch unless people are looking at buying and then they're allowed to touch that animal. Yeah, that's the only way it's okay to me because then that animal comes back and stays in like an enclosure that's, you know, a display and it's not in your breeding room. If he happens to pick up something we can't test for or know about, it's isolated to just him. And then your $100,000 collection doesn't just like slide down the toilet. So for right now, the one that I'm currently using, he is going home with the other lady that I share a vendor or a table with and is going to be their pet. So I think we have it worked out where she's going to bring him to the shows because we always been together. And but he's my like ambassador snake. But I don't do that with every single snake on the table. Um, I will sometimes let like if I have adults for sale, I will sometimes let those adults be held like that because someone is more likely to buy an adult if they're holding it and they fall in love with it and then they buy it so that pretty much happened every time i got out an adult is they were looking for an adult that was their pet going to be a pet and so they got it out and held it and then they bought it even though they weren't like i want to hold this to see if i want to buy it they were just like we're thinking about getting this we hold this one if that makes sense i feel triggered (laughs) you feel triggered you're gonna Triggered the whole weekend. Hopefully, <laughs> if we end at uh, episode mm-hmm. nine, and you never ever see another episode. <laughs> I'm I don't like Wait, people no. holding adults because be by right. default the animal sort of touches their arm because it's a bigger animal. True, you can be triggered. Yeah. Be triggered. So like. So I guess if there's no episode nine, guys, you know. <laughs> it's because I was triggered so bad I exploded. I never, you should never talk to me ever again. <laughs> Okay, um, but when I, I don't. Get all the customers. To your I know. Table, Thank you for doing you that. You can be triggered about my five snakes that are going to go home with crypto, but you were going to sell a whole bunch because or so or arena like they went to the boa table right before that that doesn't test and you know there's arena on the the base of their you know sleeves or whatever and arena can or cannot be very fast acting in ball pythons. It's really good at getting picked up off of surfaces, and they ain't scrubbing all the way down to their elbows uh, and on their clothes. There aren't. Yeah, I'm I'm triggered. I mean, I'm working through stuff. I don't want even want to do a show, but I can't seem to sell stuff sub three hundred dollars with yep. enough regularity, like just through Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, to justify I what's don't happening. Don't list anything under three hundred on any of those sites. I do, and this is probably a mistake. I just feed them until a show, and then I take them to the show. Oh, and I've heard like a lot of people who were at uh, the Portland show, because I'm not as great at the Portland show, will not be traveling up to our show. So there should be less ball python vendors there, so I should do better. If I do really good again, like I did at the last few off show, I may not go to the Portland show. Okay. Because there was a lot of competition. Yeah. We'll see. Well, I looked at the new vendor list. It's 100 names now. It was like 45. So a bunch of new people have come, have decided to vend since I last looked at it. I don't know if you've looked at it. Like Triple L is now coming again. They always come. Well, they weren't coming the last time I looked. So I was like, oh, maybe they, they couldn't coming, schedule it. They, they hadn't scheduled it yet? Yes. They, so I was like, like, maybe they didn't want to go because Josh's Frog was the headliner or whatever. Oh, um, that may have hurt their feelings because they yeah. have been... But now they're signed up to go again. So I was like, okay. They just hadn't signed up yet. It yeah, was... they've been at every show I've vended. <sighs> you know. And they get like 12 spots or something crazy. Yeah. Uh... Do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. Triple L reptiles. Are they bringing actual reptiles? Because I think the last show they just brought a bunch of um, stuff to sell in Portland. Mm-hmm. Triple L is not a dry goods vendor particularly. I'm not sure. Well, maybe I'm misremembering who I'm thinking about. We have dry goods vendors. That's fine. I don't care about them. Triple L is a, a flipper, everybody. And then you can decide what you think about that. Uh, I'm sure on their table there are animals that are not sick. Uh, 
but on their table there are 100% every time animals with mites. So you're the one with the sick that had the sick like boa or retic or whatever from a year ago. I don't know the one with like um, mouth rot and no, that was somebody else. There's always oh, okay. a fun person at a show. We're talking down shows. Shows can be good or great. Yeah, this is uh, getting real negative. Let's let's find some positive. Uh, uh, my other... I don't know whose turn it is. Is it my turn? I don't remember. I was just saying Google vendors in advance. Look at the vendor list. Decide if they're something you're interested in. And then you can actually message them and then pre to put a deposit down and pick up at the show to guarantee you get a hard to find item or a hard to find species or gender of a particular thing. If, if you want to have like a better show experience instead of just like doing the flea market thing where you like race through and try to find, which is also fun in its own way. Um, <laughs> like the looking it's for adrenaline. the, yeah, you're like, hurry. <laughs> That's so Saturday morning is always like peak psycho uh, here, oh, and then it like bad. definitely yeah, like. So if you're like super seeking something, you you have to you have to do it. You have to break the line. Yeah. Well, every uh, well you, unless you pr- purchase it in advance is my point. Unless you purchase it in advance, um, if there's something you really really want, like a hog nose, and you can't purchase it in advance, you better show up an hour or two before the show and stand in line, or get the VIPs. I yeah. did not understand what they were doing with that, but now it's more clear. Um, anyway, I don't know. The VIP can uh, get in an hour early, basically. Yes. With everybody at home yes. at our local Sorry. show. The show opens at 10. So, and this is something that happens at a lot of shows, actually. It's not particularly rare you pay like a little premium you get a cool shirt and you get to come in early and like browse before other people come in um so we'll be doing setup while people are around um what do you got you got another tip for a buyer we've sort of floated into like vendor tips but that's fine we're um cash is king gross so most people Ex- gross I don't can't believe you said me. that. <laughs> what kind of tip is that? It's uh. true. If you do point of sale, you have to pay um, taxes and fees and blah, blah, blah. You have you to pay tax. taxes on cash transactions, Jana. Uh, the state of Washington is calling. Ring, ring, ring. The state of Washington is calling and I pay taxes no matter what. But usually I don't charge them the taxes if they pay cash. I will be, and I'm going to enforce it because I'm all about rules. I'm a... Oh my gosh, the rules lady is mm, next to me. Here I show. come. Ding, ding, ding. She's going to bring like a little siren and she's going to blast it every five minutes about all the things we're doing wrong. <laughs> no, I just like... Chris was convinced that we should, like a normal show, build the tax into the price of the animals. Yeah. Like that's a normal behavior for an expo, for any kind of craft fair or whatever. I'm like... No. No. We live in a state where the state, like the sales tax, depending on where you are, can be like 10%. And it is 10% in Puyallup. People need to realize that that is a not insignificant amount. And I'm adding it separately on purpose so that it's like clear. The snake was $80. We add $8 for tax. It's an $88 transaction. That means I have to break cash. That's why I'm like, no, no, don't bring cash. Uh, see, all of mine are a $20 increment for sale, and I would prefer you bring cash. Okay. Jana's the stripper. I am the bank accountant in this scenario. I, I have point of sale, but I would a hundred times prefer half my sales are point of sale, half my sales are cash. Um, so I appreciate both, but I prefer cash. I'm sort of like doing a a metered measure. Like I want them, like Venmo and Cash App are both chargeless means to make a transaction. A lot of people use those to charge whatever. There's no 3% fee because it's sort of a whatever, a peer-to-peer cash transaction. So like I have my, like a sign with my Hair Hall of Farm, Venmo and Cash App. Then if they want me to run a card, I have Square, and then I can also take cash. But because I'm requiring tax be 
separated. I have sort of like petty dollar amounts that will make it sort of interesting. <sighs> this was a me choice, by the way. So that's an interesting choice that's going to stress you out. No, I think it'll be fine. I <laughs> I mean, maybe it won't be fine. Like, I know why people do it in $20 increments. I'm going to be laughing at you. You're going to be grossed out by me. It's going to be a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful show. We have totally not sold this show. Anyone listening who thought they were coming, they have returned their tickets. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> or burned them in, like, a, a sacrificial fire. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Reptile shows are amazing. Reptile shows are inclusive. Reptile shows are fun. Please come. Please spend your money. If you are planning on getting a reptile anyway, and you are prepared for that reptile and have done your research, they make an amazing Christmas gift. If you are not prepared, please do not buy a reptile and gift them to someone who does not know what they're doing. But prepared and informed, come spend your Christmas money at the show. It will be awesome. Yes, it's a good place to... uh find another weirdo to talk to even if you're not buying like if you want to sit in the 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 beer garden uh after you found some sort of gargoyle gecko friend beer garden yeah girlfriend what are you talking about i'm i expect chris will be lost to the beer garden by midday saturday he didn't even know there was a beer garden i know you should walk around i bought my i bought my um dad vendor tickets and he will probably get lost in the in the beer garden. It's his birthday that weekend, and he's going to come hang out at the show for two days and maybe help. But I forgot there was a beer garden, so that's where he'll be. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can barter as a buyer, but you have to respect no's if they happen. Like, um, and try to be polite about it. Like, if it's Saturday morning at 10 a.m., do you think you have a lot of room to barter for 50% off a hog nose? Do no. not barter on Saturday. If you want a good deal and you want to barter and you're coming to the show to get a good deal, you can barter on Sunday. But most people will politely decline your bartering on Saturday. Sunday, even Sunday morning at 10, whatever, you come in. But definitely sun Sunday at noon. You have a chance. Barter. Yeah, I will say yes if you are trying to buy. Wait, you're not supposed to reveal your hand this early. <laughs> Jana might care. say yes. We don't know. I I say yes Sunday afternoon if people ask for a reasonable off. Like, hey, can I get twenty dollars off this three hundred dollars snake? Yes, yes, you can. Thank you for your thank you for your purchase. All right, that's not too bad. I'm some people will come and be like. I'm gonna like wholesale price this whole table. Will you do it now? And some people do do that, but uh, oh, where are you? Yeah, come to my table Sunday afternoon. <laughs> I'll wholesale you. <laughs> I will wholesale you my table. The whole thing. That's never happened to me. I'm talking about like one individual wanting a twenty dollar discount because can't pay full price on anything. I I allow it, but not on Saturday. I guess the East Coast shows are different or whatever, but there's a lot more bartering and dickering and being like like cheap uh, right away. So you have to like shut people down early. It's a, you know, it's Saturday. Uh, Come on. Bartering is not well respected at this show on day one. Yeah, good. It's mostly it's a no to like it's these are the prices. If you don't like them, find a different table is kind of the attitude. I had a thousand dollar snake on my table and it was another breeder and he's like if that's still there and at the end of the show which duh um, <laughs> he's like I'm going to come back and chat, chat with you and he came back and we haggled a little bit did he price. end up buying it or no oh yeah for sure Okay, and, and that was totally fine because it was literally we were breaking down I took the show, the, to the show for fun like look at my expensive snake and was completely shocked to have sold it so yeah that happens but um in the furthest part i do not see much wiggle room with reptile shows and a lot of people you have to remember as a customer when you go in a lot of people 
have a show price rather than like an online sale price. And so they have already worked in a better deal for you because you are coming all coming into one spot. It is a little bit less work for us as vendors to sell 15 snakes at a show than to try to individually sell those 15 snakes and meet up and have 15 different conversations about snakes. And so there is some already some discount built in. So don't be disrespectful if you are trying to barter be kind and you will likely if it's saturday be told no right and then for the most part this going off what jan just said this is probably the best price you're going to get anywhere like morph market will be double triple correct because they're, they're building there in is... like pricing sort for shipping and the sort of cost correct. of the box and stuff so you're there these are rock bottom prices already so be conscientious of that be courteous yeah, if you, price I'm like if you want. much more talkative about a, a bargain, even on Saturday, if you're buying multiples for some reason, if you're like, I want all of your female, whatever, head clowns or something. I don't think I'll even have that many, but I would be much more interested in like br- brokering a deal on Saturday if they're moving numbers, in my opinion. Oh, for sure. But like I said, I don't feel like those kind of buyers. <laughs> I know. It's, buyers. Cr- it's crazy. This is such a pet show show um, it's such a pet pet show. this is There's such a big vendors. like metro it's, area there's just almost nothing most vendors buy their stuff on more market not at the shows unfortunately but also most vendors don't bring their more market quality stuff to the shows because it's very unlikely that you'll sell them if that makes sense we've created a culture ourselves of not bringing our good good stuff and so the other breeders aren't coming to look for breeders here because they know nobody's bringing their good stuff. Does that make sense? It's like the chicken yes. and the egg. Yeah. So We've somebody, created a, Chris a has, of, has said like, and I'll just let him do it because it's fine. He's like, I want to bring, you know, 25% of the snakes we bring are things we don't expect to smell, but are like dick waving snakes. And I'm like, that's a lot, but fine. Because we'll be able to come home on Saturday so we could like bring back you know another I'm, I'm coming home on saturday i'm not saying anything else this time yeah so we could bring back more if we sell out and like the expensive ones are taking up slots or whatever it is a chicken and the egg thing but the, yeah this show is sort of famous for being you know 300 dollars and below type stuff not even 500 and below but yeah which I'm is different than what it is in other places. Range. Right. I, I'm going to have a different... Like, I'm going to have a few in that price range, but I don't expect them to sell, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. We'll uh, see. I don't know. I'm nervous. It could either go really well or it could be real bad. <laughs> it depends on the economy's vibe for the holidays. I haven't been too in tune with that. Um... And there are less vendors there than I thought that I competed with at Portland. Uh, you just, I feel like you don't know until you've done it. <laughs> and that doesn't help you. I guess we're moving more into like the vendors. Yeah, it's but, fine. Uh, we're already in it. We're going to give tips to oh, vendors okay. or like your experiences, stuff like that. Um, so it's a little nerve wracking to not know what, how you're going to do you can go and make five grand or you can go and make two hundred dollars i don't know i i get nervous i get really nervous this week i will be nervous all week and then i'll be fine once i get there i'm going and i don't necessarily have like a dollar amount i want to sell i would just like to give away like maybe a hundred business cards i guess i i that's my goal really like if i could talk to a hundred people you weigh 100 business cards. So I don't feel like I'm bringing, like, my flagship animals anyway, because a lot of my production is already sold. It's just sort of some of the leftovers. You know, I'll like... <laughs> well, I mean, they're good leftovers. Like, there's still little boas... Christmas bo- leftovers. <laughs> there's still little boas and stuff that are... Actually, like, most of my balls haven't even been picked over yet, so there'll be some stuff. I just, like... None of my, cli- all my Climax are sold. My Climacophoras. I don't have hog noses yet. 
most of my corns that are like really nice are I'm either keeping them, I'm not selling them. So next year is like a better year. So I'd rather give people business cards and be like, hey, do you want a blue and green snake on a stick that doesn't die from like low humidity? Uh, I got them. They're coming. They'll be here and ready in probably like June or May. So that's part of at the next at the next show. Are you? Do you know? We probably don't know yet if you're gonna do it again. I do not know. I'm doing it again. I guess we've discussed that I might be moving. Maybe if I move, then no. Like if it's too close in time, I'll just have to wholesale right. whatever I can't manage to sell in like a timely manner. But I don't think we're moving anytime soon. And if the show goes well, and I at least like make back the cost of the displays and stuff, I would count that as like a vindication. And then I would do it again uh, in the oh, spring. Hot, hot take. Have your displays arrived? No, I want to jump off a cliff. <laughs> I bought acrylic displays from Dreamco, everybody at home, about seven weeks ago. And their time was six to eight weeks you messaged them like I advised you. Yeah, I did, and they didn't show. respond. They didn't care. Um, oh, that's great. So they sent me the lights, and they sent me, like, a PVC deli cup holder that I'll use for corn snakes, which is, like, something they already had in stock. But I don't even have, like, a FedEx number, and if they're sending it freight, and they send it Monday, I still might not get it by Friday afternoon to, like, fill it. So I bought Trade Show wooden box with plexiglass in it to replace the acrylic displays. And I'll just put deli cups in them. We'll use the acrylics next time if it doesn't make here in time. Which is fine. Life sucks. I don't know. And maybe I'll like that more anyway. I'm not sure. Because then, like, you don't have to touch the snake to get it out of the acrylic to put in a bag or a, a bin. It's in the deli cup to begin with. So if I get really grossed out by people, I might just make a rule there's no touching. And so all snakes stay in the deli cup from the beginning to the end. They don't come out at all. That, that, there's a chance that might happen. I mean, decided so they get a front row seat. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't... Uh, I, I, like Because I'm not going to like overly present my snakes, I'm not expecting to sell a ton or something. I don't not go in there for that reason. Going there to like show up and be part of the community and hang out, sell what I can, whatever, and give out business cards to promote the like stuff that's coming next year. That'll be even cooler. That way, like my I can manage my expectations if it's a very poor selling show for me. Why did you decide to vend in the beginning last? Jana's vended twice now, everybody. So, like, why did you decide to begin the first time? Got some experience. Okay, so I decided to vend because nobody had any idea who the heck I was. Because selling baby snakes one at a time at sub 300 is tedious and soul-sucking. Had you because... listed stuff on Morph Market? Before you yeah. ended, or were you just like, I already assume it was bad and I needed to go? Yes. Okay. So I just knew it would be soul sucking because I had bought snakes and I knew that I was soul sucking when I was a new buyer. <laughs> um, I just knew that the one on one and the local and the. I have sold snakes locally, like breeder males that I didn't want or if I bought a collection and I had to sell the ones I didn't want to keep like I had sold locally before and it's such a soul sucking experience to sell one snake at a time and then sometimes there are people who um, message you all the time forever um, and so I just knew that I didn't want to be that kind of a seller. And so your options at that point are um, wholesaling or putting them on Morph Market and sitting on them for years and years and years. Because all of the stuff for my first season, 90% of the stuff for my first season is sub 200. It was a learning year. I was using breeder females that I could get a hold of. I did not have high-end males to breed to them. 
it was a Laramie year and there was very little in the way of holdbacks. And so I knew that I needed some avenue in which to sell these that were not going to suck out my soul. <laughs> and so I had planned to go to the April show and figure out all I needed to know about vending, not be a vendor, but just go as a, a person because the first show that I vended was actually the first retail show I had ever been to. No, wild. Ever. That was that wild. wild. That's like, I tell my story and people are just like, so you just decided one day that you were a reptile person and that you were going to do all these things. Like I had no personal history or foundation that I drew from. It just was like all in one day, which is, that's kind of my personality, but I had no idea what to expect. I had no idea what I was doing, but I knew that it was the correct place for me to sell the snakes at the quality that I had. And so it was basically just getting over my own anxiety of something I didn't, I didn't understand how reptile shows worked. I didn't know my research into vending was basically YouTube. Mm -hmm. Did, did you feel like go you, and walk around. you got the, I don't know, respect or peer attention that maybe you were looking for? Or was it just you were in your own lane selling to new people who, you know what I mean? Like, did you yeah, have... So I was going to sell all the lower end stuff that I had. And I was also going to put myself out there into the community community like you said like get my name out there people have no idea who I was like I had very little following on Instagram I but no one knew who I was in the in the community and so I feel like you go and then people are like oh I know you I've seen your banner or oh I remember you from somewhere you're you're advertising for yourself just showing up and, and to me that's worth the money all by itself for the table whether you sell anything or not um, and so I do feel like I made a lot of connections that I didn't have before and now I'm involved in like a Instagram vendor chat list or breeder chat list um, and I am involved in some groups on Facebook that are like the vendor group chats and stuff and um, people know who I am now but I feel like for the most part I still even though I've done two shows am not in the in crowd of our show okay i don't know who that who is in the in crowd do you think there's are there multiple in crowds Cause there's like 100 vendors or whatever that kind of do no, it some of the time there's like a, no no there's like a there's an in crowd and they do like a vendor dinner and a bunch of stuff um but it's always like a crap show and the last two times i've had to like switch restaurants at the last minute and then you go to the restaurant and they're not prepared and and then you're like waiting till like 10 p.m. to eat. And you've met me. We do a podcast together. You see like 12:30, which is like now. Jana gets a little spacey. Jana gets a little cranky. I gotta eat when I gotta eat. And so I haven't been as present in the vendor popularity group as I probably could have been at the last two shows because I'm tired. I just worked all day and I want to go eat and so I haven't done the vendor dinners and I if if I had I probably would be more buddy buddy with everybody but like there was a big barbecue I didn't get invited to that there was um just, I, I'm not in it yet and I've been doing it for a while now um, uh, six months and so I don't know maybe experience will be different for you you plan on going with the vendor to the vendor dinner with your husband right I've thought about it, but I we have to get back to take care of Alex. Like, take pick him up from being babysat, basically. So we don't okay. have time, really. Maybe one day. Yeah. If, if Alex is older, day, a like little bit say, easier. I, go and I've gone. I don't know. I've seen a couple people that come back from the vendor dinner that are at the same hotel as me. And... I don't know, they're pretty hammered, which is fun if you weren't vending the next day. You know, like, I'm not going to go get hammered and then show up on Sunday. Right. Hung over, reeking of tequila. 
<laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> that's, that's, sort of, that sort of stuff is if like you like fly to Daytona for fun and you're going to do the Daytona show and drink and not vent, just have fun and play on the beach. Right. Like that's when you, that's what I would want to save uh, merrymaking. Maybe this year we'll have to do it, like do Daytona, Arlington, Tinley or something. Or something, yeah. Some, so one of those. Um, just for fun. No kids, just uh, just reptiles. Uh, I don't have any other tips for vendors. Do you have any other tips? I Before I went to a show, I set up my whole setup. In your house? In my house. Uh, well, it was July, so I actually could be outside. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. And I have a table. So I actually set up my whole display because I had never set up a vendor display and I found it very helpful. It helps you think of all the little tiny things that you don't think of that you're going to need. I have like a list of things that I'm just going to bring just to double check, like tape and zip ties and scissors and just like <laughs> stuff to like, and, yeah, yeah. So I have 12 bottles of sanitizer and I have a, a little cleaner and paper towels. Yeah, that's all like pretty normal stuff because everybody poops eventually. Somebody poops somewhere yep. in a deli. And extra delis in case like whatever somebody's, happens. Somebody's going to poop. So bad you're traumatized. Every every show somebody has. It's so bad. <laughs> somebody has destroyed their little deli. Yeah. To the point that it just goes in the trash. Right. <laughs> Not yeah. the snake, the deli cup pee. People. come on <laughs> i think there's a really good snake discovery video about vending tips that's kind of old because they used to run a show that they go over like bring everything you need and then times it by two because somebody else might need it eventually tape or whatever because they need to hold down their sign because something broke or cobble together something to fix something so that's all uh, oh, good advice. Hot take. Charge your square. It's, or or bring a charger. The, or bring a charger. Um, I have the, the card reader. Do you have the big square thing or do you have the little... Oh, fancy. Okay. Yeah, I have the little dongle, but if... So if somebody brings you a... Has a, a chip card and you swipe it through the, the dongle, they can reverse the transaction as card, not at the location pretty easily. So it's like a fraud issue to upgrade to the chip reader specifically. It's only fifty dollars. I have I have one I have one that's not in a thing like yours is it's just like a square. Did you plug like into this. your phone? Is it a chip no, reader? Plug in. Yeah. All right. You like insert the card into it. Weird. Well, maybe mine was like the old style. But mine has like a cord I can plug it into, you know, any USB outlet. Yours, but yeah. I think yours just has a the the base it sits on. I just don't have a base. I got a oh. I have a I have a special. Um, okay, I get what we're talking about. Case. Yes, there is a separate piece that comes off if I want to, but I keep it on the charger at all. Sorry, everybody, at all times. <laughs> we have video, so we can see what we're doing. Right, you guys at home. The me. Square has a point of sale reader that integrates with either a phone or an iPad. Or even a laptop if you want it or whatever. So you can charge someone's credit or debit card. And also like input a cash transaction if you're trying to keep your accounting clear. And you don't want to have like a separate register for accounting. But you have different sorts of card reading devices that Square can sell you. So Jen is saying pre-charge it or bring the charger with it. So it doesn't have to um, even run out. You want to also charge your phones and keep charges for your phones there because most people use their phones as I use my phone as my point of sale yeah Chris is going to be like the like hot cashier girl at the show that's my plan <laughs> like he doesn't know what's going on he's dumb he's confused beautiful though beautiful so we'll have him run like and he's really kind and happy which should take the edge off of your... Yeah, I know. And I'll, and I'll be, like, triggered the whole time. So he'll just be like, yeah, yeah buy some more snakes. So he's going to, like, run the Don't point of sale. Her. Somebody shot her puppy when she was a kid, and now she's bitter <laughs> about yeah. all snake diseases. Absolutely. So just just, just don't mind her. She's a little damaged. 
We accept all in the reptile community. So damaged. <laughs> I'm surprised they let me out doors. Um, <laughs> You're just a little, a little scarred for real life experience with diseases, and that's okay. Yeah. Because you came back. And you're educating, and when we get done with the show, you're like, here's the 15 things you need to change, or we can never speak to each other again. <laughs> <laughs> I always have a very severe position about many things. It's because I'm the most scared. But it's probably okay to have, like, a 60% version of that more severe position, and that's still safe 95% of the time or something. But I'm still trying to right. prevent the 5% or less risk part. Right. I'm just like I'm was too too hurt, too sad, and now I want to be as safe as I can. That's all. Well, well I mean, you were you were hurt twice, so yeah. you had the really severe, and then you came back and you had testing, and you were me, you know, like the ninety five percent safe, right? And that wasn't like, even I safe got enough. This. I'm so happy, and then and then you know you got burned again hard, and so you. I understand where you're coming from and I respect the position that you're in because of this experience. You have to back that up. I'm in like your number two slot and I realize that I could be safer, but I also don't want to suck the fun out of all of the hobby. And so are you making people wear gloves at the show this time or no still? No, I don't do that. Okay. And that's going to bother you. I don't do that. I let people hold snakes i usually it's one snake the snake um that's not even for sale but um it's a very fun experience to me that's how i draw on all my customers like that's what i'm there for i you know i if kids have never held a snake before i'm giving them that experience and i understand that from where you're coming from and the experiences that you have that that's triggering and not a thing that you can do but i'm choosing to do that even okay, it's here's our question. Whenever you bad. become big ovaries, Jana, are you still going to do shows to sell to kids because you just like kids? Or are you going to be too busy and you're going to wholesale everything under 300, no matter how many there are? Because you'll just have like more, you know, 250, 300 other baby ball pythons that are worth substantially more. Are you still going to do it for fun or whatever? Um, I don't know. Well, one step at a time, one season at a time. I think I might. I think I really enjoy the like connecting with the everyday person and it reminds me why I'm in the hobby that I'm in. It's not about I have the most expensive snake in the region or you know I mean, it's very grassroots why we love the hobby and why we got into it. I think it reminds me of that and it's I think it's a really fulfilling experience itself without selling anything and so I'd like to say that I will continue to do it, but I'm not that future person that is trying to run a higher end business. So I don't, I don't know. Um, I've also not been burned yet by any of the diseases in a catastrophic way. And so I still have this ability to be a little bit naive or willfully ignorant, but I, I can't say what, I will do in the future or what my plan is. Cause I'm really just taking all of this just like a bit at a time, if that makes sense. Yeah. I would prefer to not do shows probably, even if I enjoy it, I would, I do not want to do shows. Um, but that's I, been your take for a while. Like you've drug your feet on going to a show. Yeah. I don't want to do a show. A I've while. been selling stuff and torturing myself on whatever avenue. Whereas like, as an infant in the hobby, I was like, I need to do shows. Yeah. To me, shows are incredibly dangerous and uh, you need a love fucking balls of steel. And if you don't think that, then holy fuck. I don't know. <laughs> that's that's what I think of shows. Because I've been to shows where people look at their snake, look at you, make direct weird eye contact with you, and then put alcohol on a paper towel and like rub the adult mites off the snake. While looking at you, put the snake back in the bin. It's still for sale. It's still for sale. They've just, you know, took the big obvious adults off. I don't know. You'll have to give me your opinion. Well, you were, went to it in July. It seems it seems like a good show. It's much better this than... It's coming across like so negative. <laughs> well, I've been to like Hamburg and Harvard Gras, which are East Coast shows that are hmm, interesting. 
There's some bad juju out there. And there's like great vendors right beside them. That's like the shame of all of it. But this one is cleaner and now it's in the new facility. It's more physical space between vendors. So if there's like a, a grocer vendor, they're way over yonder, you know, it's quite yeah. physically far away from other vendors. So that's good to me. You don't have to like accidentally bump into everybody's table just to walk by or whatever, like the way it used to be where it was like- Absolutely, like, yeah. So like you're physically do not have to touch other people, which is good for COVID and everything else. And you also like won't get mice on your shoes necessarily because there's just too much space between people. All of that seems better. I only would v- vend with them now because they're in the new uh, building. Because space is important. I don't know. Well, that, well, that explains why this uh, the tone of this show hasn't been very positive. It's I think that you're in general very anxious about the dangers of disease sharing at shows. Yeah, a Chinese wet market where they're like murdering uh, tanukis and selling them, and they're half alive. Yeah, you know that level of like the gross. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A reptile show is like just a couple steps down from that. We'll see, and I don't see it like that. I see it as uh, like we'll see. Yeah, see all of my stuff like that's going is going to be quarantined on the return, and half of it will probably end up being tested. So, like, right. that's when how much were, of a burden when it you is were for a me. Child, did you go to a reptile show? The first one I went to, I think it was probably fifteen. So, does that count as a child? Yes. Okay. Okay. Did it make you feel happy and magical inside at 15? How did you mm. feel as a 15-year-old going to a reptile? I liked going. It was nice. But I've seen more. No, don't, no but. No, no buts. No buts. Just you liked going. Yeah. I. So that is why I go to the shows. Is I also got like, arena from reptile shows, so I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't want... People to be like, oh, a show because the vendors are clean is a, is a immediately good. There are icky vendors there for sure. Your best bet for a clean animal is to find a vendor that's clean and just buy from them. Don't touch 10 things on your way there. Don't go to the bathroom and touch the doorknob. Go buy from the clean vendor. Don't walk around and touch all the tables and the surfaces. Gross. Gross man. Go buy from the vendor you want. That's why, like, if you pre-research and then go there, you can get a good snake. And it won't have arena. If you just buy based on your eyeballs, I don't know what you're buying. Nobody will agree with me because it's the, part of the fun is, like, the browsing and whatever. But I'm not there to the browse. I'm not there to friendliness. browse. Friendliness? Hmm. Not at my table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, good luck. Because that's that's what there is you gotta be you gotta be friendly you gotta drop people in you gotta make connections like i fully expect to see people at the show who were there in uh in the portland show who weren't quite ready to buy who are now going to be ready to buy and coming back and looking for me because i made it like an impact here's maybe like the way things are different i would rather set up a show with no snakes like three chairs or a table and two chairs and a sign and just say let's come talk snakes i would almost rather do that that would be easier for me to deal with the, st- the stress because i don't mind talking shop with people i could talk shop until my my tongue falls off and like convincing you why snakes are great pets and whatever that part's easy the potential zoonotic disease transfer risk and the the spillover event that came from whatever dudes, rhino iguana somehow figured out how to jump into snakes and it's the, you just figured out the the new way to make a new disease. Congratulations. That's the part that's not fun to me. So if it was like, you know, those old style expos where people would like give presentations and they would all come and chat about geckos and it was called like a symposium and they would just all hang out and then drink every night there was not even there's no selling it was not a commercial show it was just a hanging out talking about gecko show that's a better yes. format for me that seems great that's a different yeah that's a totally different vibe that's not why i'm going i know i know that's not why i'm going either i'm still going to sell snakes but any more tips just the tips just the tips 
go and be excited. And if you're selling, engage with the customers, be friendly, don't be hanging out in a chair with your phone, browsing Insta, okay? Because that's, no one's going to, it's, there's already this like awkward, like you need to break the ice with the people who are like walking around and they want to make a connection to buy their animal, especially if they're just looking for a pet. And they can't do that if you're on your phone. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I, it takes a lot of energy to do a show. It takes a lot of prep to do a show. It takes, I don't know, I'm drained for like two weeks afterwards. I believe it. Because I, I am an introvert, even though you can't tell. I'm like a extroverted introvert. So like I love to do things like this but I cannot it's not the kind of thing I do every day afterwards I have to like go home and hibernate and hide and not talk to anyone yeah days. that's what's gonna happen around here <laughs> also little housekeeping we'll be doing a very short episode post show just sort of recapping what embarrassing things Jessica did who whether was, or not we hate each other. Whether or not we hate each other. Who was wearing cat ears and tails. Whose fetishes have been revealed for the first time at the show. Wow. That's what I'm looking forward to. Is the people watching. In, in my unicorn. Please onesie. do. I want to see. <laughs> Listen, people. I, I'm Part of the show is going to be like promoting the podcast and like getting some sort of signage up and like getting people to subscribe. So if you're a real weirdo and you're listening to this now and you're ready to dress up as Itachi Uchiha from Naruto, I'm ready. I'll give you two candy canes from my um, store. I'll give you 10% off. Fuck it. I don't care. Because that's what I want to see. Because I think the like eccentric um, basement dwellers that when they emerge... From the basement, yes. and they're ready to show off. That's the best part of it to me. Yeah, you know, oh we don't. Oh my gosh, need... so much greatness happens at Red Pet. <laughs> and this is not judgment. This is actual enjoyment. No, yeah, I might dress up too. You don't know and if we ever did like a Halloween in show. Their own authentic space. It's amazing. Yeah. So. So next week, short episodes. Probably no current events and no collection updates. Just post show like reaction. And then we'll go back to the, the normal sort of format the f- following week, which is the week of Christmas. All right. See you guys at the show. Better be there or be see, square. Yeah. Don't bring your mites. Uh, I'll fight you. See you at the show. <laughs> if you're all up at the fairground. Uh, Pacific Northwest Reptile Show. Yeah. Bye. All right. Bye. <laughs>
Hello. Hello. So did you guys do this live? No. They just don't edit. So all the... Uh, oh, okay. Whatever. That's That sounds dreamy. I don't want to have to edit. I'm so glad you do it. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's our destiny to have a non-edited podcast. You know, mm. we... Yeah, probably not. We record in the morning. We have 40 kids and pets between us. Uh, uh, husbands, whatever. It's always going to be something Something that's going to interrupt. It'll make it better. Maybe like our kids are in high school and we're um, wealthy millionaires or whatever. <laughs> we could take our private jet to our recording studio. Yeah, our, yeah, exactly. That's yeah, the only right, way this right. is going to... You know, in like a central location... Yeah, that'd Since be fun. Let's East go Coast. to Costa Rica. Oh my god! Oh, Costa Rica. Yeah, we can yeah, record sign like me up. ten episodes. Yeah, it'll be Probably fine. There. Yeah. Um, there's a nice expat community. I'm glad we've planned this out already in advance. We got it. It's good. All right, we've been recording this whole time. I don't know if any of that you want to keep. For your no, life. I did not know you were thought you were doing sound checks. I am, but I'm also recording. I just figure oh, okay. the sooner well, we start good. recording, the less we might talk and then we might get done before midnight. Well let's intro ish. <laughs> intro ish. <laughs>